Good morning and welcome to our worship service at Dobbins Memorial United Methodist Church. My name is Waleska Trinidad and I am the pastor of this wonderful church and I am excited that you are here ready to worship with us. Uh, we have been praying all week for all of you. And if it's the first time that you um, contact us or if it's the first time that you are watching us, I want you to know that we have been praying for you and that God have a message for you. I will also invite you to go to our website at dobbinschurch.org and find out more information about our congregation and our future programs. And in our church, we believe in the power of prayer. And I want to thank you all for joining me uh, last week, praying for all the leaders in the church. And this week, I want you guys also to pray with me for revival. We need a movement of the Holy Spirit, not only in our church, but in the body of Jesus Christ. So I will invite you that this week, um, you add that to your prayers and please um, if you have any concerns or any prayer requests, contact us so we can pray for you. I have a couple of announcements, so please um, just bear with me a moment. Um, first, the youth group, it's, uh, it's meeting again, and we have a nice welcome back party um, uh, last week. We enjoy that. We have a lot of fun. Um, but this uh, fun is not over. And through the summer, we will continue to meet every other Wednesday at 6 o'clock in the back of the church. So if you uh, know um, a young uh, kid or if, um, if um, you have a son or a daughter that is in the ages from 12 to 17, just bring them to the church. We will be meeting there. We will have fun. We will be learning about the love of Jesus Christ. And also we will be learning about racial um, justice. So please um, come on out and join us. And talking about meeting, I am happy to announce that we will be having a special outdoor worship evening on August 16 and 6.30 p.m. We will be following physical distancing, and it's going to be a concert in the park style. So bring your chair or blankets, bring your water, and don't forget your mask. We will be sending out information via mail, and we will be uh, putting more information on our website, Facebook, and Instagram pages. So please uh, keep connected. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame The cross has spoken I am forgiven The King of kings calls me his own beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. My living hope, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living That seal the promise Your buried body Began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion Declared the grave Has no claim on me Then came the morning that seal the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me and hallelujah praise the set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope and hallelujah praise the one who set me free Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Jesus Christ, my living hope My chains are gone 
home I've been set free My God, my Savior Has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing grace The Lord has promised good to me His word my hope secures He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood His mercy reigns unending love amazing grace my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood His mercy reigns unending love amazing shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever mine you are forever mine let us pray God of unending love you are worthy of all our praises. We bless your name forever. We thank you for allowing us to be graced by your presence today. You have promised that whenever we call on your name, you will hear us and you will answer our prayers. God, we ask you to come into our midst and have fellowship with us. Make us people who care deeply about the well-being of others. God, this morning we come before you and we confess that we have allowed our situations, the busyness of our lives, our worries, to crowd our minds and our hearts and they have silenced your word. Please forgive us, O oh Lord, when we have been less than faithful. Restore our hope, our courage, and let us rejoice in you. Keep us mindful of the needs of our family, friends, and others, so that we can be agents of hope. And now, 
as one body, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, thank you for your continued generosity in this time of uncertainty. Here are the ways that you can give. You can mail us at 320 Union Ave, Delanco, New Jersey, 08075. Or you can give online by going to our website at DobbinsChurch.org and clicking on the Donate button. This is secure, you don't need a PayPal account, and you can use a credit card or debit card. Thank you again for your generosity. This morning's reading comes from the Old Testament, 1 Kings 19, 1 through 10. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom brush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. The Lord appears to Elijah and the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. May God bless the reading of his word. And today we continue with our sermon series, Quit Quitting. Last week we talked about quit being afraid. And through the life of Jacob, we realize that us too have the tendency of running away when things get tough. But because God cares for us, instead of running away, we need to quit being afraid and receive our blessing. So are you ready to continue quitting today? Because we are quitting to feel sorry for ourselves. We all been there. No one understand me. No one loves me. Everyone is out to get me. The whole world and all the circumstances are against me. But we know that that's not true. We know deep down that literally not everybody is out to get you and not every situation is against you. And even if that was true, if God is for you, who can be against you? But once again, this is easier said than done. And in today's scripture, we see the prophet Elijah asking God to take his life because he had enough. He was tired, he was overwhelmed, and he was afraid. But I want to take some time to refresh our memory and talk about the events that leads to this moment. And if you read um, a little bit before chapter 17, 
Elijah announces a great drought, and he tells the people that it will not rain until he tells God to make rain, and it happened. Then he met a widow and asked her for water and food, and she explained to him that she only had one more meal before her and her son starved to death. And he promised her that God will provide until they were able to provide for themselves. And it happened. Short after that, the widow's son was ill and died. And he prayed to God so he will come back to life. And he was resurrected. But the most impressive and powerful part of the story is when Elijah go to talk to the king of Israel. The king of Israel was separating himself and the people from God, and they will worship Baal. And after a series of events, he asked God to send fire from the sky to burn the sacrifice in offering to God and also kill the 450 Baal prophets. The people, including the king, repented and turned their hearts to God. But when the queen found out the recent events and everything that happened, she sent a servant of her to Elijah with a simple and short message. She wanted him dead. And when Elijah received the message, he ran away and asked God to end his life before she was able to kill him. I was recently reading a book, and the author was um, telling a story about a time that he was traveling to Florida. And behind him was a lady with her son, and they were going to Disney World. And the lady was explaining to the kid about the beautiful, um, that was Disney World and how much fun they were gonna have there. But through the whole time, the kid only could cry because he was not sitting at the window seat. Did that sound familiar to you? Have you ever acted like that? Having everything for you but still Feel sorry for yourself because you don't have all that you want. I know I have. Not long ago, after I accepted Jesus as my savior, I was diagnosed with a rare disease, especially for people my age at that time. The pain and the degeneration of my bones was so accelerated that the doctors weren't sure if they were gonna be able to help me. The secondary effects of the medication were so severe that I will go blind and my liver and my kidneys will, store, will stop working very soon. The doctor didn't think that I was gonna live that long. But to tell you the truth, I don't remember too well what the doctor was saying because as soon as I heard the words not live long enough, my eyes were just set on Liz while she was playing in the stroller, not able to understand that her mother was never gonna be able to care for her again and will probably die very soon. So I started the treatment, and my mother and my sister will take turns to care for me and for Liz. Most days, I will be crying and screaming all day and all night for the excruciating pain. My hands and my legs will shake uncontrollably due to the medication, and those were the good days. So I started to do like most, most people do. I started to feel sorry for myself. And I remember one day, it was a really bad day. I was in bed and I was crying and I was screaming. And I started to pray. In reality, 
what I was doing, I was throwing myself a pity party. I was ranting at God. How can this happen to me? Why? What was going to happen to me? What was going to happen to Liz? What happened if my family got tired of taking care of me? Why did I have to live in pain? Why God forgave all my sins and now was letting me suffer that way? And then, all of a sudden, I feel so alone. And I ask, Jesus, why have you left me? Where are you now when I need you the most? Because I know if you were here, just your presence will make me feel better. And in that moment, I felt the touch of a little hand in my shoulder. And when I looked to the side of my bed, there she was, Liz. She was only three years old. And she was looking at me and said, I am here. Like Elijah, I forgot in whom I believe. I forgot the miracles and wonders that God had done in my life. I forgot all the uh, teachings and everything that I have learned in the Bible. I stopped thanking God for what I had, and I started to complain for what I didn't have. I was just looking at myself and feeling sorry for me, and I wanted to quit. But the reality is that we choose our thoughts, like we choose the TV shows that we watch and the radio stations that we listen. When the programming is not good, just change the station. So how can we change our view in the midst of our situations? By changing the station. When we find ourselves going back to feeling sorry for ourselves or quitting, change your perspective. Look, some people think that the answer for when you feel sorry is to look around you and find somebody that have a far worse situation than yours. And in a way, this thought have good intentions, but in reality, I don't think it's completely right. Because your situation is your situation. And it's real. It doesn't matter how many other people are going through the same situation and how they react to that situation. This one is your situation. This is your suffering. And you are a unique individual. You are unique and you have unique characteristics that make you who you are so Sometimes comparing our situations to others, in my opinion, is not always fair. And to be honest, there's always going to be someone that has it better than you and someone that has it worse than you. In my opinion, the cure for feeling sorry for yourself it is stop looking inward and stop looking outward and start looking upward. While I was sick, I was invited to a three-day worship retreat, and they were also going to pray for the sick. So I decided to stop feeling sorry for myself, get out of the bed, and I went. The first day, I was there the whole day, and the special preacher that will preach at night, and there was the person that have a healing ministry around the world, will go out, preach, and pray for the sick. His name is Dr. Cirulo. But the first night, he came out, and he preached, but the Holy Spirit didn't move him to pray for the sick. 
So the second day, I also went. And I was there the whole day. And he came out and he preached. But the Holy Spirit didn't move him to pray for the sick. But the third day, he let everyone know that the Holy Spirit was going to make healing miracles. The Holy Spirit was moving and he was ready to heal the sick. And you probably will think, oh my gosh, the pastor probably was so happy that finally he was going to pray for the sick. But no, I wasn't. Because that day the place was so full that I had to sit on the third floor. There was no way that I was going to make it downstairs. There was no way that I was going to get through all the people that were there for the same reason that I was there, because they needed healing. So once again, I was ready to quit. Quit to my hope to be healed. But right at that moment, Dr. Cirulo says, I want everyone to know that it's not my power, but the power of the Holy Spirit. And for that reason, I am not going to impose my hands on anyone tonight. The Holy Spirit is going to move in ways that will heal the ones that are sick. And that day, by God's grace, I was healed. The same way that my condition started out of nowhere, it was gone. I didn't feel more pain. The inflammation of my body was gone. I went to the doctor again and again, and they did the test all over again, and there was no explanation other than a miracle. And I am here today, and praise God, I am well, and I am healthy. Elijah wanted to die. He was ready to quit, and God gave him new strength and showed him that things were not as bad as he was thinking, because God had a plan. But the reality is that when we are in serious situations, we tend to forget that we don't know it all. We don't know the fullness and the complexity of God's plans for us. We don't know what is next. And for that reason, we need to trust in God's perfect plan. Not all the stories end like mine. I know that. And not all my prayers are always answered the way that I hope for. But we have to learn to trust in God's perfect plan. When we feel sorry for ourselves, we are limiting God's power. We can let God work in our lives, and his grace cannot move in us because we become obstacles for God's will and plan. Most of the time, our tendency is to quit even before we start the race. Elijah, for so many ways, saw miracles that he even thought that were possible to happen. But as soon as he heard that the queen wanted to kill him, he forgot that God was powerful and stopped trusting in God's plan. Do you think that God did all those miracles through Elijah just to let him die at the hands of the queen? Elijah almost quit when, he was, when his problems were about to go away. I almost quit when God was ready to heal me. But God also has a plan for you. So don't quit. Think right now about that area of your life that you are about to quit. Think about that situation that you are ready to give up on. 
now. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Don't quit. Trust God. He has given us the victory in Jesus Christ. You may be tired. You may be upset, frustrated, angry, sick, marginalized, abused, forgotten, in need, sad, depressed, anxious, you name it. But here are some words for you today. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praise of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Jesus is telling us today that it's time to rise up. It's not time for quitting. It is time to let God be God because that it was God knows how to do best. We can overcome because Jesus did. We can cry. We can go into the corner. We can throw tempter tantrums. We can do everything we want and nothing will change. But the moment that you realize that God is in control, in that very moment, you will be ready to overcome whatever it is that is going on in your life. So quit feeling sorry for yourself. Jesus has called you for bigger things. Quit feeling sorry for yourself because Jesus overcame you can overcome your past, your situation, your sickness, and your own doubts. He is calling you to overcome. God is telling you, you are chosen. You are holy. You are my special possession. You are mine. I got you. I got your back. I love you. So my brothers and sisters, the invitation this morning is to quit quitting and quit being sorry for yourself and let God unfold the amazing plan that he has for your life. Let us pray. Dear and amazing God, we give you thanks for this message that reminds us who we are in you. Thank you for your promises. Please forgive us when we overwhelm ourselves, our hearts and our minds by our situations, and when we limit your power and the power of the Holy Spirit, doubting, being afraid, feeling sorry by ourselves feeling sorry for ourselves. God, we ask you forgiveness for all the times that we delay your, your blessings to our lives. We ask you that your presence makes real in our lives at this time, that your Holy Spirit flow in our lives in this moment wherever we are help us to trust in you and in your perfect will because you had a plan since the beginning and that plan was fulfilled with Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior and because he overcame we can overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit, the work in us and through us. Amen. Amen.
seated above Enthroned in the Father's love Destined to die Poured out for all mankind God's only Son Perfect and spotless one He never sinned But suffered as if he did All authority Every victory Is is yours Savior Worthy of honor and glory Worthy of all of our praise Jesus, awesome in power forever, awesome and great is your name, you overcame, power in hand, speaking the Father. Sending us out Light in this broken land All authority Every victory Is yours Savior Worthy of joy, love, hope, and courage that we may bear this gift with others and with the blessing of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, let us go out and share the good news in the world. Amen. There 
there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. And there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Is he all sufficient sacrifice so freely given such a price bought our redemption heaven's gates swing wide and there is power in the name of Jesus and there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain break every chain and there is power in the name of Jesus There is power In the name of Jesus There is power In the name of Jesus To break every chain Break every chain Break every chain There's an army rising an army rising up there's an army rising up to break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every chain Break every chain, 